Good evening. Welcome to second uh, Harvard Graduate School of Education, Educational Change Sauna. This follows the uh, the class that we have here every Wednesday afternoon, and um, we try to wrap up somehow the the key issues and uh, the most interesting questions uh, of the day. Today we have been speaking about uh, what makes uh, Alberta, Singapore, and Finland some of the successful education systems in the world in order to understand what is the, the heart of the change knowledge that we could then use to improve education in uh, other countries in the world. So I have uh, two of my students here, AJ and uh, Jennifer. Um, uh, let's start. What is your uh, kind of a burning idea after the three hours of uh, looking at these things. Um, well, my name is AJ, and I'm studying technology, innovation, and education here at HGSE. And we spoke with Phil McRae from Alberta today, and he said a quote that really struck to me. And he said, having the ability to innovate and having the flexibility to support innovation is important. So today I'm wondering what are the characteristics of a school system that has the ability to innovate and has the ability and the f flexibility to support this innovation? Uh, what a great question. I, I think, uh, first of all, I, I do think, like, I know Phil agrees with this, that we, we often use the word innovation and to innovate too loosely in education because I, I think we should be much more careful and uh, probably think a little bit more about what, what innovation really is. Uh, I think what people often uh, refer to um, is risk-taking and creativity that follows the, uh, the risk-taking. My opinion is that in, in all of those countries that are educating so-called innovation-ready uh, people, that they, they are not trying to teach innovation, they are not to teach creativity, but they have developed their school systems uh, in ways uh, that uh, actually some, some, somehow incorporate the idea of risk-taking, trying out things, even failing, um, uh, making, making mistakes in the school. If you remember reading the, the Global Fourth Way, the Alberta chapter, how the, the Minister of Education was asking uh, educators and teachers and uh, leaders to, to tell us more about the failure. And I, I think if we want to uh, see more innovation ready people coming out of our schools in uh, any country, we need to be more mindful to the fact that we, we have to have a culture in a classroom, or we need to have a culture in a staff room in every school where people, whether they are teachers or students, feel that they, they can try out new things, that they, they can experiment new ideas without being afraid that they, the failure will be somehow harmful for them. And, and this is how I see that the, the innovation will be then embedded into the concept of schooling. Um, my name is Jennifer. I'm also in the Technology, Innovation, and Education program. And so what I got from today was lessons that we can learn from Singapore. And we talked a lot about how um, that could be applied to the system in the United States. Um, my question is mostly about um, what can actually be applied, because a lot of what we're learning in Singapore, I feel that are actually successful, mostly because of the size of the population and also the culture. And so I'm wondering whether um, there's a framework, or how can we know what lessons can actually be learned and applied in the United States? Um, it's a great question, again, and, uh, you know, we hear this uh, often not only with Singapore, but with Finland and uh, Canada, even, that what, what can the United States that is so different and uh, uh, so much more diverse than many of the other countries learn from smaller places like uh, in this case Singapore. But I, I think where Singapore has been particularly successful is to um, to create a teaching profession um, that is so attractive uh, for so many young people. Um, and I, I think this, the, the interesting lesson from Singapore to, to the United States and Finland and many others is that how can we move further from this kind of a mantra of saying that we need to have more uh, pride and young people enter into teacher education. Uh, I, I think Singapore has understood it very well that it's not only it's not enough to say this and repeat over and over again that we need to have more people interested in teaching, but they have really done this and they mm -hmm. have changed the uh, how teachers are prepared initially um, uh, in a very high quality and rigor program to uh, work in the schools, but also how teachers are supported 
afterwards and how teachers are given more and more authority and autonomy in the Singaporean school system to uh, truly feel like they are, they would be um, you know working in a medical clinic or in a law office that we often use mm -hmm. kind of a medical doctors and lawyers as a kind of a reference to what it is uh, is to be a teacher but I think you know there are many things I think um, that Singapore is doing well some of them probably go close to what you you are studying here the technology and and in innovation as well that is a kind of a cornerstone of uh, the economy and, and the future of Singapore. But I, I think what we all can learn from the tiny little country is to uh, see how uh, how you can move away and further from the rhetoric of uh, you know praising the importance of being a teacher mm -hmm. and becoming a teacher to really have a situation where so many people, young people, want to uh, go and work in the schools. Um. I guess because we're talking a lot about lessons we can learn from the United States. And so if you had to give one policy recommendation to the United States, and it should be something of priority and urgency, <laughs> what would you recommend as the um, one thing that the United States system wow. should <laughs> adopt? From any, any, any of these countries anywhere in the world? I, yeah, I guess so. So what is something that the United States system should think about? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting question again because if you, you know, I've been, um, I've been spending a little bit time in Singapore and uh, I've been spending a lot of time in Canada and um, uh, in Japan and all, all of these countries, you know, in the end of the day, if you ask the same question that, you know, what, what, what has been inspiring you mm -hmm. to, uh, to become a kind of a, one of the leading nations in, in the world, and certainly in my country, it's uh, always the answer is the same, that it's the United States. It's either the research that has been done here in this country, or it, they are the innovations or ideas that have been developed and tested um, uh, in different universities and laboratories and schools here in the United States that we are all depending on, we have all depended on the, the, the American ideas and innovations. And now the question is the other way around, that what the United States can learn. And I, I think first of all, my first reaction to this question is that thank you for asking this, because <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is something that is a, is a big step forward, that if we really understand that we need to now, now we are living in a phase where we need to continue to um, learn from uh, one another. I think the answer really depends on whom you ask. And, and what type of person you have sitting on the other side of the table. Uh, you know, I have been asked the same question here over and over again, and my reply, my response has always been the same. That I think, when I look at the American school system, uh, especially here, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the system in Singapore or Alberta or Finland or, or some other places, I think you could do much, much better with the uh, the whole idea of accountability and standardized testing and, and these things. I think this, this has been very much a kind of American creations again, but somehow the, what the situation now is and what the emphasis and the kind of a topic of education discourse seems to be, it's a kind of a detail that this is uh, somehow, somehow the, uh, the map is lost now or the compass is broken or something like mm -hmm. this. So that's why I say, you know, if you want a kind of, kind of a simple idea of this, Tony Wagner, who is a colleague in this, uh, this school, is speaking about the, creating the school accountability, education accountability 2.0. And this is something that uh, other countries can help the United States to, to develop. It starts by rethinking the standardized uh, testing uh, system and, and culture, uh, redesigning the whole accountability thinking on uh, how, s how teachers and schools can and should be held accountable. And I think many of the other things, many of the other problems and challenges facing this country right now could be much easier to solve, work out, if this uh, accountability 2.0 would be uh, designed uh, by the lessons from, uh, mm -hmm. from these countries. How do you think moving forward, today we talked a lot about what now? And I'm wondering, how do you think these high-performing countries will respond to the global education reform movement, or how will how should they, or how will they? Mm, yes, you know, fin Finland is one of those uh, countries that is now at the kind of a verge of, uh, uh, you know, asking itself what to do and um, um, and where to go. We heard from Phil McRae the same thing that the global education reform movement is uh, affecting 
influencing now the um, um, the Alberta and Canada. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think it remains to be really seen. My personal view is that uh, not too many people still understand that there is a kind of a movement that is a global movement that is trying to um, you know, uh, change education systems to look like businesses or corporations and I think it's not the, the, the solution to these uh, problems. I think first of all we need to become more aware of this uh, what, what are the opportunities and particularly the dangers of this this movement and then we need to probably rely more on the the best of our tradition especially tradition in this this country of the United States where so many of these educational solutions have been able to help and, and work in other countries so you know much of this is about the um, awareness you know how much we are able to uh, advocate and understand these things um, and the Rest is then probably just a pure luck. But how did you? How did you? Um, what did you take away from the uh, from the class in 15 seconds today? Um, the status of teacher in the country is very important in determining um, the success of the educational system. Mm -hmm. And the community, the importance of having a community and having strong families and neighborhoods. Wonderful. Ben Houlihan is watching along, and we should probably say hello. Ben. Ben. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Ben. He's following along on Twitter. All right, that's, uh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay, are we still... Uh, Wrapping up, yeah. We can wrap, wrap up, okay. Um, so... You know, my, my point uh, in, in this uh, kind of a last round of um, sauna is that we, we need to study the education systems that have been able to become successful, but we need to learn to be mindful with this, uh, what some people call change knowledge, how to uh, use this knowledge in, a, uh, in, a, in a systems and situations where um, things are not working, uh, working that well. Any final uh, thoughts? Would you like to wrap up this? Uh, <laughs> what is the idea that we should take, take with us when we go home? Um, I think the overall thing that I got from today is that we're all trying to change something, but we should always recognize that, as you were talking about for Finland, that it comes slow, and we should be mindful of watching that process. Right. right. Yes, for me, the more I learn about these countries, the more I want to learn about other countries and seeing what they're doing and knowing that there's so many school systems to learn from. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. This has been wonderful. If you want to read more about Singapore, um, Finland, Alberta, Ontario, California, this is a wonderful little book that we are reading in this class as well. It's called The Global Fourth Way by um, Andy Hargreaves and Dennis Shirley, a good, great colleagues and, and friends. Um, join us next week again. We are going to actually go back to this question of global educational reform movement, what it is, mm -hmm. and is it good for us, or should we be worried about that? <laughs> um, and uh, until then, see you next time. Thank you.